Good morning. Today is Sunday the 30th, last day of April, and uh, we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Jesus asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 14. Why do men, why do men say that... Oh, sorry. Who do men say that I, the Son of God, am? Asked Jesus. That is the question of the ages. Everything both here and hereafter depends on how we answer this question and what we do with our answer. Some speculated that Jesus was John the Baptist raised from the dead or a metaphysical embodiment of someone who would perform a mighty work and prepare the way for the return of the Messiah. But Jesus Christ is none of these. He is more than a prophet, more than a teacher of truth or a preacher of righteousness. He is much more than a master educator, a kindly philosopher, or a traveling messenger of goodwill. He is who he says he is, the Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, our Lord, our Redeemer, Lord, and King. <sighs> okay. I'm not making excuses for how tired I am, but we, uh, I took the kids for a three hour long walk. It was in the 70 plus degrees yesterday, so I got sunburnt. And then when we got home, I helped them on the roof, at the patio roof. And then Alex came down to my room at like four o'clock in the morning and was like, go get my binky. Go get my blanket. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? But anyways, okay. Moving on. Today is John chapter 10, verses 22 through 42. Um, in these verses, he goes to the temple, and he's sitting on Solomon's porch. And the Jews come to him, and they say, Enough with messing with our heads. If you're the Christ, tell us you're the Christ. And he says the same stuff over again. If you heard my voice, if you believed in the Father, you would believe in me. The Father testifies of me, and I testify of the Father. Um, but, you know, you don't believe us, and the Father and I are one. And they pick up stones to throw them at him, and he goes. For a good work we still... Oh, no. Uh, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? And they say, We don't stone you for your good works. We stone you for blasphemy. And then, you know, he escapes them. And he goes to where John the Baptist used to baptize. And the pe people there believe on him. And that's basically the rest of that chapter. But it's like, listen, you tried to stone me once and I escaped you. You're going to try it again? But I, I like how he's like, I've shown you signs. You've asked for signs. I showed you good works. For which one of those are you stoning me? Kind of throwing it back in their face. Okay. Ugh. Let's see. Um, I guess I'll just pick a couple and read. I look tired. Okay. Why do some persons believe in Christ and his saving truths while others do not? Why is it easier for some to believe all of the gospel truths than for others? There is only one rational explanation why selected sheep hearken more readily to the master's voice. It is the fact that men develop different talents in pre-existence. A spirit sent to inhabit some mortal bodies develop talents for spirituality, for recognizing the truth, for believing spiritual realities while yet in pre-existence. Others did not. 
many of the offspring of deity have excelled in spiritual attainments in pre-existence are born as members of the house of Israel in this life. Um, blasphemy consists in either or both of the following. Speaking irreverently, evilly, abusively, or scurriously against God or sacred things, or two, speaking profanely or falsely about deity. In its most criminal and corrupt form, it consists in claiming falsely to be God or the Son of God. Thus, Jesus would have been guilty of the most terrible of all blasphemous crimes if his claims to divine sonship had been false. Death by stoning was a penalty of blasphemy in ancient Israel. Stoning is horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Um, back when Netflix used to be exclusively DVDs, I watched this one where um, this woman told her story to a reporter. Well, told her daughter's story to a reporter. Anyway, the daughter, she wanted a divorce from her husband because he was cheating on her. But he got it turned around that she was the one who was cheating or she was the one who was evil. And so they s sentenced her to stoning. So they dug this hole, which was knee deep. So she had to kneel down in it. And then they buried her up to here with her arms down. And then they all stood around her and threw stones at her until she was dead. Like just a, a beating to death in the head. It's vile. It was, it was so vile. It, vile. Abs just horrific. Um, um, The exact spot to which Jesus retired is not made clear in our present scriptures, although it is generally understood that he went to the other side of Jordan. Once again, the Jews sought to take Jesus by force, but did not succeed because the time of his death and an atoning sacrifice had not yet arrived. Instead, Jesus went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. This area beyond Jordan was known as Perea, a word which literally means the land beyond. Elder Talmadge writes, The duration of this sojourn in Perea is nowhere recorded in our scriptures. It could have been it could have lasted more than a few weeks at most. Possibly some of the discourses, instructions, and parables already treated as following the Lord's departure from Jerusalem after the Feast of Tabernacles in the preceding autumn may chronologically belong to this interval. For this retreat of comparative quiet, yeah, quiet, Jesus returned to Judea in repose in response to an earnest appeal for some whom he loved. He left the Bethany of Perea for the Judean Bethany where dwelt Martha and Mary. All right. Okie dokie. Uh, I will now leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 30th. And this is a prayer for enemies. It's anonymous. It's a 16th century old English prayer. Merciful, loving Father, we beseech thee most humbly, even with all our hearts, to pour out upon our enemies with bountiful hands whatsoever things thou knowest will do them good, and chiefly a sound and uncorrupt mind, where th through they may know thee and love thee in true charity and with their whole heart and love us thy children for thy sake. Let not their first hating of us turn to their harm 
seeing that we cannot do them good for want of ability. Lord, we desire their ab amendment and our own. Separate them not from us by punishing them, but join and knit them to us by thy favorable dealing with them. And seeing that we be all ordained to be citizens of one everlasting city, let us begin to enter into that way here already by mutual love, which may bring us right forth thither. Ugh. All right. That was John chapter 10, verses 20 through, through 42. And tomorrow, which is May, uh, we do, well, next week we do a lot. We do Luke 12, Luke 13, Luke 14, Luke 15, Luke 16, Luke 17, and John 11. So full chapters all week. We got this. All right. I love you all. Have a great Sunday. We'll talk to you later. Bye.